Welcome back to the Taiwan Outlook. And this, in this you know, segment, we're going to continue our discussion with Professor Liu Birong of the Suzhou University. And we're going to continue to discuss what happens after November 4th when America elects a new president. You know, the thing that's on the minds of many people, especially in this part of the world, is you know, will the American commitment to the Asian allies change with the new president? You know, especially we discussed earlier, Professor Liu, about mm -hmm. America's, you know, uh, leading image in the world needs to be, you know, overhauled, to mm -hmm. say the least. You know, needs to be uh, a leader in terms of example, mm -hmm. not just leader in terms of use of force. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think a lot of countries in Asia, including Japan, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and also China, and also Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. are also looking forward to, you know, whether the American commitment mm -hmm. to this region will continue. You know, uh, militarily, politically, and economically. Mm -hmm. uh, what are, what's your perception? What do you think the new president and his team of national security advisors, mm -hmm. you know, would they do anything different? Do you see many changes coming in terms of the American role in Asia? So actually, uh, you mentioned three parts of Asia. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, there are also there are exactly <laughs> yeah. those three parts. Uh, one, the first part is Japan. Yes. And the second part is China, and yes. the third part is Southeast Asia. Exactly. So the which a which Asia or in the U.S. Japan or U.S. China or U.S. ASEAN yes. relations, uh, which which one is yeah. more important to yeah. the new president? Mm -hmm. uh, for the current administration, I know, as we just mentioned, uh, is a China-centric position. Mm -hmm. So they put the U.S.-China relationship first as, uh, as the most important. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the, the new president. Mm. I think the first thing mm. they, maybe he will try to, um, to re try to rescue the, now the current problem between U.S. and Japan. You know okay. about the, the financial crisis mm -hmm. and the North Korean nuclear issue. Okay. There, uh, it will hurt the trust between United States and Japan. Mm -hmm. So, um, so who know, I don't know who will be the new Japanese prime minister. Yeah. They change quite often. <laughs> That's right. so, Every few uh, months. Yes. So uh, <laughs> the, the new American president and the Japanese prime minister, they will try to rebuild the relationship. Mm -hmm. And as for uh, U.S.-China relationship, I, I, I don't think there's a big change. Mm -hmm. Because uh, whoever be elected as the uh, president, and they will always stick to one China policy. That's right. That's why we, in, we people in Taiwan, we are very uh, realistic and, and they are very pragmatic. We know the reality. They will never shift the diplomatic recognition suddenly from Beijing to Taipei. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, uh, under the framework of a one China policy, now uh, I, I, I will see whether or not they encourage the dialogue between Taipei and Beijing, mm -hmm. or the, how to protect the Taiwan's security mm -hmm. uh, in terms of arms sales. So on the one hand, they have to provide Taiwan enough uh, weapons to protect ourselves. Mm. On the other hand, they have to encourage or discourage us to have a dialogue with uh, Beijing. Uh, if we move too fast, maybe American will not be that happy. Mm -hmm. If we move too slowly, they think it will cause a lot of trouble in yes. this part of the world. Yeah. So in this case, the uh, United States they try to play the role as a mediator or um, provide a certain degree of uh, Good office, or allow us to have a second so track two in the talks in the United States, and uh, their relationship with the ASEAN countries. So you can see the Southeast Asia; they are also very unstable. That's right. Recently, particularly in in Thailand, Thailand. In, in, in Malaysia, Indonesia, the, all, all the same too, thing. Yes. Yeah, mm. um, almost all the ASEAN countries they have more or less some troubles. Uh, this, I think the new American administration, they have to also pay attention to that, yeah. try to stabilize uh, uh, politically or financially in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So if you compare, if you want to weigh these three, uh, three Asias mm -hmm. or to, to, to set the uh, priorities, mm -hmm. uh, I think given the, the influence of, uh, of China, or, or so I think that you, can, you, can, you cannot say the U.S.-China relationship will be and uh, the, the, the importance will, will, will decrease. At, as, at least they will be as important as uh, uh, U.S. In Japan. In the past eight years, in, yes. Yeah, in mm -hmm. the past years. Yeah. yeah. And uh, maybe somewhat of a minor surprise mm -hmm. as we watch throughout the U.S. campaign season mm -hmm. is the fact that you know, China wasn't much of a factor yeah. You know, yeah. in terms mm -hmm. of this particular election. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't much of a China bashing. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. For example, the uh, poison powder milk issue uh -huh. did not really get spilled over mm -hmm. into the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact of the matter remains is you know, U.S.-China relations is very, very important 
who, you know, no matter who the next president is. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. were you surprised then, Professor Liu, that in this election there wasn't much of a discussion of U.S.-China relations and there wasn't much of, a, you know, making China the uh, scapegoat mm -hmm. of the American economic woes? Uh, actually, I, I, I'm not surprised You're because not surprised. Their, their domestic issue is more important. That's right. Uh, economic crisis. Yeah. They find no scapegoat. Mm -hmm. It is interesting that you mentioned the poison milk. Yeah. Uh, in the past, so China always tried to find the scapegoat. <laughs> That's right. You, uh, Western journalists, uh, they try to attack China. That's They're right. jealous about Blow uh, things uh, out of proportion. The, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but, but this time, they have uh, poison milk and they, they say, oh, their government ha have to shoulder some responsibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, American, the same thing. No, okay. sometimes, uh, in, in the past, they say, oh, the trade deficit or something, the trade relationship with China was unbalanced, and so mm -hmm. they attacked China. But this time, uh, all the problems uh, come from Wall Street, yeah. so they cannot attack China. Uh, so in, in that case, uh, so that's why I was not surprised that China didn't become the major issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, China also played a very important role. You know, uh, Wen Jiabao said they want to, to give Japan, uh, Americans some money to save the right. to, 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 to mm -hmm. solve their financial crisis. You can see uh, uh, China's diplomacy become more mature and yeah, more, more uh, yeah, sophisticated. Yeah, yeah, sophisticated. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. and also the fact is, uh, there's no denying the fact that mm -hmm. uh, Professor Liu, that U.S.-China relations is probably the single most important bilateral relationship today mm -hmm. in the world, and that will continue to be, you know, even with the new U.S. president elected, mm -hmm. you know, in office. That um, the fact of the matter remains is that U.S.-China relations, in the words of you know current Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, is very complex. You know, some parts are good, some parts are not so good. Mm -hmm. you know, I suppose their economic relations are very, very you know, much integrated, mm -hmm. you know, very, very tight. Especially you mentioned about the global financial crisis. Mm -hmm. and Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao said that you know, we will continue to buy into <laughs> U.S. government <laughs> treasury bonds and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, you know, I, I think you know, economic relations will continue to be a, a point of contention. You know, with the new American administration, you know, with the uh, evaluation of the renminbi, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, whether uh, Chinese will you know continue to rely their growth primarily on exports, or mm -hmm. will they, you know, they start to stimulate mm -hmm. the domestic consumption, mm -hmm. and also on the military side, mm -hmm. of course, you know, every military around the world needs a imaginary foe. <laughs> no. I suppose yeah, that exactly. you know, that's the mm -hmm. case mm -hmm. you know, today with the Chinese military as well as with the uh, American military. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact of the matter remains is that between the two militaries, mm -hmm. uh, even though there are hard lines, you know, I mean, there are you know, high-level exchanges mm -hmm. and visits by their respective military leaders, mm -hmm. uh, but the fact of the matter remains is that there is still that fundamental apprehension about the other, the other side's intent, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the case of Washington towards Beijing, mm -hmm. uh, with no apparent threat over the Chinese territorial integrity. Why does China's military you know, has been growing at the uh, percent of 15, 16, 20 percent over the last 10 years or so? So the, uh, the fact of the matter remains is there's always going to be that fundamental contradiction mm -hmm. between the two militaries. Mm -hmm. And also, finally, politically, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. between U.S. and China. Yes, of course, you know, U.S. is you know, no doubt the paramount, you know, the leader, the Roman Empire of the 21st mm -hmm. century. Mm -hmm. uh, but China is the new kid on the block, especially after the Beijing Olympics has been overall mm -hmm. very successfully staged. You know, I, I think certainly that's coming out party for China, mm -hmm. and that's certainly being very well received around the world. Mm -hmm. And militarily, uh, in international forums like the United Nations, mm -hmm. in APEC, and other you know uh, regional and uh, you know, high-level summits, mm -hmm. where U.S. and China always see eye to eye on mm -hmm. very important, you know, controversial issues mm -hmm. like Iraq, the Middle East, oil prices, and financial crisis, and all that. So all these you know, different areas present a very complex mm -hmm. and somewhat clouded future for U.S.-China relations. Uh, what do you think with the new president, whether it's Senator Obama or Senator McCain, what do you think uh, they will do that's different 
for what's been happening with George W. Bush for the past eight years in terms of managing this very, very important bilateral relationship. Actually, uh what you just mentioned, they have a very, very complex and they have a, a, a area of cooperation, they have yes. an area of a conflict, yes. and uh, that is normal. Mm. I think uh, as an internationalist, uh, I can say it is normal mm -hmm. you know, things you know, between uh, any two big countries. They have a collaboration and a conflict at the same time. What they have to do is uh, try to manage these bilateral relations, just mm -hmm. you just mentioned. Management is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, many international theorists, uh, they uh, you know, uh, say that you know, so as a two big countries like United States and China, and uh, what th what they can do, what they can make contribution to the world peace is simply to manage their bilateral relationship well. That's right. Mm -hmm. So in China, you know, in the past, the China always say that we have a peaceful uh, rising. That's right. But peaceful rising, but some other Chinese scholars they said that no, peaceful rising is um, is a wrong word because you know it's a big country. You want even if you want peace, mm -hmm. the people still regard you as a threat. That's right. So you uh, don't be that naive. You, know, you say I want to be peaceful country, and the people think yeah you're peaceful because you are too big a country. Right. So what you have to do is to try to face the reality. People always treat you as a threat. Mm -hmm. Now you have to 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 to, to let them you know to, to to try to manage this relationship. That's right. For example, uh, you mentioned about renminbi. Renminbi mm -hmm. is certainly also an issue there. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are lots of negotiation also about the, the, the rate of renminbi. Also, the military build up. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, of course, the United States, they, they try to engage the Chinese military, try mm -hmm. to rebuild bilateral military talks, mm -hmm. and uh, try to build, build up some um, uh, confidence building measures uh, so that they can reduce the possibility of any misunderstanding. Yeah. Um, of course, you no know, competition or arms races. Uh, you know, spoken or unspoken answers are still there, but uh, as long as they can maintain a good working relationship at least, and uh, from time to time they can cooperate uh, mm -hmm. over several specific issues, and uh, both of these, and then they both of them then they can shoulder some responsibilities in mm -hmm. the world stage. Uh, I, I think that uh, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. and, uh, no, they can maintain the, the stability in Western Pacific. Then mm -hmm. Taiwan will be secure. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Professor Liu, for those comments. And when we come back after a short break, we're going to continue this you know, discussion with Professor Liu, and we're going to talk something very close to all of us, and that is cross-strait relations. How will that be different under the new U.S. president? We'll be right back.